Welcome back to NTD, my friends. I do appreciate you showing up for this incredible video and this incredible conversation I get to have with my buddy Kent. We're at Sun Pharrell Aerospace here in Southern California, and the growth has been magnificent. Started in 1956, and if I might add, in a house from a $50,000 investment that has turned into a massive building worth over $25 million at this point and constantly growing. So we're gonna give a little shop tour, talk about what they do, how they started, the growth of it, and everything in between. So Kent, thank you so much for having MTD in. Thank you, I appreciate it. So yeah, so as you said, the company started in 1956 in a converted house uh, with, with seven guys. Uh, the company name is Sun for All. It stands for Sun, Father, and Relatives. And during the, the years of, of growth here, we ended up in Anaheim, in this 88,000 square foot building that we're now making all kinds of parts in to support the aerospace industry. Started in 1956, there was a change in 76 and another change in 2018, buying from an 86-year-old lady. Is all of that correct? That is correct. It was a family-owned business before, and 2018 we got the opportunity, myself and, and six other guys, to buy the company, and we're taking it to the next level. And it started out with plastics and a more basic situation, but some really unique style of creativity of those plastics, which got bad up by a couple of companies, right, or a major company of some sort. But as it's grown, you're making your own molds and dyes and investing in CNC machines. We have injection machines. So much going on that we get to showcase today, right? Yeah, and that's what the company is all about now, growing the company and also investing in our, in our people. You know, I always say we're a family here. I don't have 95 employees. I have 95 families working for us. And that's what really changed this, this whole perception of this company, that we work together as one team. You know, get better equipment for the guys doing it, the work. Uh, have the opportunity to bring new up uh, capabilities in-house. So we brought mold making in-house. And if you look at the table down here, this is an example of a mold that we're making for one of our customers. And the, the precision of the machines how we design the tools, the people that are working for us doing the design is critical uh, in order to be successful and produce a part that meets the customer requirement. Well, I know this is mostly a shop tour about every different department that you have within the facility, but just let me say, when you spoke of your people and the families that go along with it, that is a beautiful, kind and Swedish mindset. I do appreciate you saying that. Thank but you. also looking at this, you guys are doing some really beautiful, fine finished work coming off of these Doosan machines. Yeah, and sometimes when you outsource this, we get it back and you can see all the manual labor they put in after machining. By having a very capable machinist that understand the capability of the machine, this has zero hand labor after coming off the machine. There's no polish, it's just a machine finish, and there's no sharp edges unless where it needs to be for a shot off or something like that. But this guy that we have on staff, Jacob is his name, is just awesome, and he makes super, super tools that we put right from here into production. It's really beautiful work. Do you remember the days when we had to do that hand labor that went afterwards and the amount of time that's now uh, yes. being saved Absolutely. utilizing the Doosan and making your own molds in-house? Yeah. And that's all about control in order to meet the customer requirements and the customer deadlines. And uh, by having this in-house, we can lay out our own schedule. We don't have to depend on anybody else to get on in the back of the line to get my tool made. If we need it, we can start today and we can make tools today. So should we take a walk and see some of the other amazing parts of the company? Let's do it. Yeah. Well, now, Kent, we're standing in a very warm and comfortable rubber lab, which I like the name rubber lab as well. But what goes on in here? This looks very unique. So this is actually the, the lab where we de develop new compounds and also verify all the compounds that we buy out. So uh, in the past, we always used to buy every rubber that we used in our production, we used to buy from other people and then just put it into production. Now we have a full lab here where we do verification testing and development of new compound that meets customer requirements. So this is a, a, a new um, capability that we've added the last couple of years and it really changed the opportunities that we have to present our com uh, to our customers. So um, uh, having the capability of, of verification testing and the capability of developing new stuff brings us to the next level. So. Which seems to be a statement we're saying a lot, right? Whether it was the molds before, whether what we're here now, or I know the next steps that are coming to this great tour, everything in-house. Absolutely. And presenting new capabilities to the customer. That sets us apart from our competitors. You know, we can do a lot of stuff in-house that other, our competitors can't do. We can make inserts, we can do machining, we can do plastic injection molding, and we do rubber compounding and rubber processing, so. You don't have any competitors. 
<laughs> I think so. <laughs> I think we're one of a kind. Can we talk a little bit just real quickly about these machines and how they work? Because I've not personally ever seen one before. So this is where we post cure. So this is a post cure oven where we do the, uh, the compounding. We, we make a part and we verify that it meets all the requirements of the customer. So we do a uh, specific time and, and temperature that we hold. And then after that, we go on to other machines that we have in this room to do elongation testing, tensile testing. And, uh, and we have a, an expert in this room that, that takes care of all that. I only know a little bit about it, but we have an expert that has been in this field for a long, long time. And his name is Mike McCabe. And uh, he is part of, of the, the success of this, this area and all, of our business. So Kent, what are we looking at here? I have never seen anything like this before. So here's actually where we mix rubber. So this is called, we're, we're milling rubber right now. And this is where you either uh, just soften the material up or you actually make a new compound or a new rubber. So in rubber, it's multiple ingredients go in and we ensure that they are mixed throughout the whole batch of rubber. Uh, so this is called milling, what we're doing here. It's just mixing over and over and over again until every uh, different, all the different materials are mixed throughout the rubber. This to me likes the, looks like the adult version, more dangerous version of me playing with Play-Doh. How do they know when they've got the right mix together? So there is a, a standard that they go, hey, if I mix something and turn it over 10, 20 times, I will ensure that all the material. And there's a process, you see how he rolls it up, which ensure that it, when, when it comes out the next time, it's mixed throughout that area. And then he does it again. So he just keeps rolling it and then flipping it over. So this is, this is Modesto, and he's one of the, the experts that we have on doing this, this milling part of it. Kent, this kind of looks like some sort of jungle gym or something for my pet cat, but I'm absolutely sure there's more to it than that. What is this machine? Well, this is called a calendar machine. So after we mill the material over on, on that side of this uh, compounding room, we take it here and we, we run it through the calendar and it sets the parameters of the thickness of the material to a very accurate. We can hold accuracy within half a thousand of a thickness Ooh. coming out here. And it has the capability of also adding fabric to the rubber itself, which is called calendaring. So taking the specific thickness, adding uh, fabric to it, and then we utilize that material in our build process and want to get into the production site. So once we know that the mixture is complete, ready to go, the right amount of ingredients of each part, it can then go through here and you can actually add fabric to what you've created Correct. when necessary. Yeah, so you can add- Called calendaring. Called calendaring. And you can add, add layer on one side, uh, fabric in the middle and layer on the other side or just on one side. So there's a lot of different ways you can add material here. And then we roll it up using these so it doesn't get stuck together. So it's just a layer of fabric in between. How many layers can you put in it just out of clay? So you can, do, you can do two layers of rubber and fabric in between. And that would be the max? Yeah. And then we can change the thickness from you know a couple of thousand up to whatever, quarter of an inch. Wow. This, I mean, honestly, I've never had the great pleasure to see this type of process around your shop making what you're making here. I see machining all the time, so honestly, thank you. My mind is constantly being blown by what's going on right now. I'm having so much fun learning about your shop. Yeah, and that's what sets us apart. We do a little bit of everything, but it's all aerospace. So we're at the machining side where we were making molds. Then we went into the rubber side where I knew absolutely nothing about, but was completely intrigued by what was going on. Now I see all sorts of other machines beside me right now. What section are we in now? So here we are in the rubber department where we basically lay up and build rubber parts to support our customers. So we have full press lines going from a smaller presses, 10 by 10, all the way up to 48 by 48 inch press. And we have the capability of doing up to 24 foot long seals. So, and it's all to support all the different airplanes in, in the US arsenal. We, uh, we work with all the, the big customers across the board and we make parts for all of them when it comes to the rubber side. So, if you look at the table here, here's a, a mold that we have made in-house. Uh, it's for one of our larger customers, and this is now being put into production. And we've run first articles through this. Uh, parts come out perfect. The customer is buying it off, and they love the quality. Uh, they love our performance, and uh, we're ready to produce. Well, there's a story you shared with me that I would love to share with our global audience, if that's okay with you. And that was that part you showed me that has the strength of titanium but with as much, much lighter and much more cost effective. That is part of the process of what you guys do in the world of aerospace, allowing it to be cost effective, lightweight, with 
all of these molds and everything of the entire shop that we've walked through. It's one small sample of what you guys are working on. Correct. So that is a composite molded plastic part that is 30% glass. So the glass makes it very strong and the type of plastic that's in it just makes it very light. So the customer came to us and said, hey, we need to do this because a machine part is so expensive and we can't use that. So we, we suggested to go to this specific material. It's in the military industry, so we can't talk too, too much about it. But uh, it is almost as strong as titanium and weighs a third of it. And it's utilized on a lot of different uh, military applications. That it's, so it's a, it's a flight part that goes on missiles, basically. So Ken, as we walk into this area here, these are some of your newest investments. And I know that you're continually expanding to bring more in-house. What do you have planned for not just now, but the future? Yeah, no, we see the benefit of these Dusan's machines that we've added to, to our arsenal. And uh, we actually have our next machine showing up in about a week. And with the, if you look at over the next couple of years, we're planning to add between four and six machines to the Dusan family here. So we love these machines. They're easy to operate. And like we talked about before, accuracy, repeatability, and, and led, the service is awesome. So Bringing it all in-house. Well, okay. Knowing what's going on and having this wonderful shop tour, firstly, thank you for allowing us to come through and do that. But I know our global audience is watching you right now because you do such a unique and have capabilities that no one else in the world can do. How can they reach out to you? How can they find you? So first of all, I just want to say thank you. This is an opportunity for us as well to tell the story of who we are and what we're all about. And yes, we do a lot of different things. but. Um, you can find us at sonero.com, S-O-N-A-E-R-O.com. That's our website. But I wanted us to talk about our capabilities and our capacity. So we have a lot of capacity due to the new investments that we've done, not only in machinery, but also in people. And to add people to our family to come on board, it's awesome. It makes me feel good. So people, if you're looking for a job, we're hiring. If you're looking for somebody to make rubber, plastic, and metal parts, we are it. So. Look us up, contact me, Kent Anderson, at sunair.com. That's my email. Thank you. Thanks for watching, guys. Kent is amazing. Look him up. Amazing company.